In December we're going to be offering one of the most extraordinary collections of French Art Deco ever assembled. The collection is put together by the late Stephen Greenberg. He started his project in the 70s, at a time when he really was among a relatively small band of pioneers, reassessing, reappraising, bringing back into the spotlight the great treasures of the 20s and 30s. He was there at an early stage, understanding straight away what great French Art Deco was all about. He saw in it both the grandeur, the elegance, the stylishness, also the extraordinary quality, the, the love of fine craft, the love of exquisite materials, brilliant execution. Stephen set himself the project of creating spectacular Art Deco environments, both for his home and for his office. Stephen's collection includes a number of pieces which one might really call emblematic in terms of illustrating those tendencies. There's a Jean Dunant table, for instance, which has a decoration which seems to be a homage to the Russian suprematists. Among the most exceptional pieces in the collection are two lacquer screens by Eileen Gray. Both are remarkable. They define different aspects of her approach to design. The one that perhaps touches me the more is the red brick screen. The fact that it really does transcend the functional and becomes a piece of sculpture, an extraordinary work of art. The piece is constructed of lacquered rectangular blocks pivoting on thin rods and manages to become really a sculptural exercise in solids and voids which can be adjusted as one pivots and twists the, the various panels. It's an extraordinary concept. We are here at the office of Steven Greenberg, which is located in the penthouse of the former Takashimaya building on 5th Avenue. Steven's original office was located in Rockefeller Center on the 67th floor above the Rainbow Room. It was the distinct Art Deco style of Rockefeller Center that gave Stephen the inspiration to decorate his office in this particular style and that heightened his passion for this era. The offices were so emblematic of Stephen. You walked into these offices, the ceilings were 25 feet high, the views were astounding, there were terraces surrounding the space. That space today is now the observation roof of 30 Rockefeller Plaza. The space was so dramatic and so well suited for the collection that people just would come and say they'd never seen anything like it. And I don't think there was anything like it anywhere. He started collecting probably in 1972, maybe 73. I remember he said, let's go to Paris. I want to see some of the Art Deco dealers there. So I went with him to Paris. We had a great time. We went one day to Opus, the flea market, and he bought these three glass birds. He appreciated beauty. He appreciated refinement and Art Deco really represented that to him. From the first time that he began to be interested in it, he worked at becoming expert in the field. And he really did over many, many years. Stephen's collection focused on three artists in particular that were among the most distinguished of their period. The French ebeniste Emil Jacques Roman, the lacquer artist Jean Dunant, and the graphic artist and painter Jean Dupas. All three artists showed works at the famous Paris 1925 exhibition and displayed some seminal works there. I'm standing in front of Stephen's desk. It is designed and made by Emile Jacques Roman, the famous French ebeniste of the 20s and 30s. It is made in lacquered wood and chromed metal, which was an increasingly fashionable material at the time. Only seven desks of this model are recorded and four of those are considerably smaller. The desk was part of a group that Ruhlman designed for the 1929 exhibition in Paris and it was the centerpiece of the display. 
it was set in front of a very large window with floor to ceiling curtains and sort of very much looked like what Stephen recreated here in this office with these curtains. The desk is flanked by two screens by the lacquer artist John Dunant. Stephen collected many works by this artist and was particularly proud of this aspect of his collection. He possesses a large number of panels, screens, and particularly vases by this artist. And they showcase in a wonderful way the various techniques that Dunant used, such as eggshell, dunandry, and lacquer. This is a wall covered with panels by the French lacquer artist Jean Dunant. In front of the wall of panels is a group of furniture designed by Jean Rothschild, which was made for the Grand Salon of the Normandy. The chairs are made of gilt wood and covered with hand-woven Augustin fabric. The Normandy was a French luxury ocean liner that was designed in 1934 and was really a floating museum that traveled between Paris and New York. It was dismantled in World War II and the surviving elements can today be found in many museum collections. In the Grand Salon where these furniture would have stood, there was also four very large scale painted glass murals by Jean Dupin. Stephen owned two panels of one of these murals called the Chariot of Poseidon. He installed them above a dining room set by Emil Jacques Roman from the 1925 exhibition. Roman and Dupas very often work together and it is a fitting combination to display these pieces together. This ensemble over here perfectly captures Stephen's vision of his collection and the key artists that he focused on. In the center is a Macassar ebony cabinet which is outfitted on the inside as a bar. It has a beautiful gilt bronze block by Simon Foucault. The cabinet is flanked by a pair of wonderful Emil Jacques Roman table lamps which are situated on a pair of pedestals of lacquered wood and chagrin that Stephen had made specifically for this purpose. Stephen bought a significant proportion of the collection in the early years and honed in straight away on quality, on really great names and great pieces. What is particularly exciting for us, and I think will be exciting to our clients, collectors, is the fact that we're talking here about pieces which haven't been seen for just so many years. It's an extraordinary privilege and very exciting to bring this material before our audience.